In this video, I'm going to show you how to use GIS to teach biomes. So the first thing that I want to do is to convey to them the concept of what a biome is. It's a large scale ecosystem and for us to use a map like this is a great place to start just using the satellite imagery and some of the aerial imagery that we can zoom in and see. And continent of Africa is a great uh, place to start because the biomes are very, very obvious here. We start literally with an observation task. Say what you see. Notice what is shown there and notice the colour and very quickly they can pick out, yes, well it's that sandy colour here towards the north of Africa and then it's green in towards the middle. And it shows that these biomes are genuinely large scale ecosystems They can be seen from space. But even at this stage, when we're looking at the big picture, we can still zoom in and get a little bit of a sense of what that's like. We want to zoom in. This is a 20 kilometre scale down here. It gives you a sense of what it's like in the middle of that biome, that large scale desert of the Sahara Desert and a lovely sense of what it looks like zooming in. Then we can zoom back out again and see it in its large scale context, this desert biome. Then we can zoom in towards the center of Africa and I get them to notice there it's not just green but can you see different shades of green. So you've got a darker green in here in the middle and bands of lighter green there. So let's zoom in and see what this reveals. If we go in closer and closer and closer, we get into a very, very small scale with the resolution pick up a little bit more. And clearly what we're seeing here is the tropical rainforest. What we see in this tropical rainforest is just the density of the tree canopy. So it gives a sense of, in the complete contrast to the desert biome, here we have a biome where the vegetation is incredibly dense in comparison. So that's our yellowy orange at the top, that's our darker green in the centre. We'll zoom back out again to set that in the context of the larger scale biome. And then above here we have some interesting locations to visit. Where is that intermediate green? What's it like here? Let's zoom on in and we'll see. And here to our savanna grassland. So we're noticing here that the density of vegetation is a lot less than it was in the tropical rainforest. Again, if we zoom in nice and close, allow that resolution to pick up. We can see here that this biome does have some trees. Yes, but they're interspersed with that grassland, that savanna grassland. And again, it just gives a flavor and a taste for what this biome will actually look like. Can we, so we can zoom straight back out again and reinforce the concept to them that this is, uh, or these are biomes, large scale ecosystems. And it's one of the beauties of GIS that I always find that you're in charge of scale there. So you can go from the continental scale right down to very, very minute detail very, very easily and very readily. Next thing that I'll do is turn on a layer showing the biomes of the world themselves. Zoom back out and let that pick up. And I'm just going to change the base map here to make it slightly less cluttered to a light grey canvas. It gets rid of some of those other extraneous details because all I want to do here is to focus on these biomes now. We want to see where they're found. Now this is where I then want to focus in a few of the biomes, some examples, and really get them to be describing distributions and locations. And again, what we can do with the GIS map is to manage the cognitive load a little bit by reducing some of the complexity of this map. And we do that by using the filter. We'll click on here, the little filter icon, and I'm going to select the filter is, and let's choose Tropical Rainforest. We'll apply the filter, and there it appears. Now it's an interesting thing to get them to begin to, uh, to describe the distribution here, and to help them with that, I'm going to turn on the main lines of latitude, the equator, the tropics, and 60 degrees north and south. And the first question that I'll ask them really is, what's with the average latitude of the tropical rainforest? Is there a line that you could draw across the map which would show um, 
or, or will go through every time it hits a continent is going to go through some tropical rainforest and I guess in this case it's the equator the equator runs you right through the tropical rainforest here in Brazil in the Congo Basin and across here through Southeast Asia so that would be if you like the average latitude but we can also take a look at the spread um, and you can look at statements like this. Is this statement true? I'll just pop this over to the side a moment to let us see more of it. Is this statement true? Is it true to say that pretty much all the tropical rainforest lies between 30 degrees north and south? Is that true to say? Yeah. Is this statement true? Everywhere between 30 degrees north and south has tropical rainforest. Uh, clearly not. So it begins to hint at them that latitude is clearly a very d strong determinant factor in, in distribution and location here, but it can't be the only one. There must be some other factors. We'll explore those in due course. It also allows us then to take a wee look at the different continents, and I can use the measure tool here, select measure, and this one here, location, and as I move around, you'll see that the latitude and longitude is displayed. So I can say to them, right, in south and central america what is the range so we can see here it's from about 24 degrees down to about 30 degrees that's the range there what's the range in asia again about 30 degrees down this time though to about 10 degrees and what's the range in Africa. Well, we just had taken a look there, hadn't we? The range in Africa is from about 5 degrees north to 5 degrees south. So we're not at this stage going into the explanations. You know, they can come later, but we're just working on our observations to say what you see. So we're seeing a general relationship with latitude, there, but then we're seeing some regional variation in that. Now, having done that, how do I capture this information with the students? Uh, this is where the visualizer comes in, because I've given them a, a blank outline map of the world, and the first thing that we'll do is to see it on the approximate location of the tropical rainforest. And then I guide them into drawing these kinds of conclusions about where it's located. Most of it's between 30 degrees north and south, but in Africa it's much more concentrated in this band, in this 10 degree band. It allows them to capture this information. Now, I, um, I do it in my class because this is sixth form class and we've got a very open bring your own device policy. So the students can use their own devices uh, and they uh, that allows them to be in charge of the location and the scale and the filtering and all sorts of things like this. Uh, makes it much more interactive for them and a much more generative um, exercise in the sense that they're selecting the information in charge of it. But it can be done as a teacher in front tool if you don't have a, an open bring your own device policy. Um, I could do it like this and onto the visualizer like this and they can capture that information. Now from there, it's a simple process of rinse and repeat. It's one of the things I find that whenever we're doing GIS tasks like this, if you can build in a, a set of procedures that are repeated in different locations, it means that the procedural knowledge of what they need to do, um, turning on the filter, things like that, quickly becomes secondary and they focus on the geography. So I can go to the filter now and let's say that this time we want to edit that filter and this time we want to select deserts. There we go, we apply the filter, and there are the deserts. And again, you can have a very, very interesting conversation. Same kinds of questions. Are there, let's say if we stick with the Northern Hemisphere, first of all, what's the average latitude? Is there a line that you could draw through the different continents that would, in each continent, pick up desert? Well, yeah, again, that line is approximately about 30 degrees but then you can start to take a look at the range um, between here in North America 44 to 18 in Asia um, maybe about 47 48 down to about 36 and Africa about 33 down to about 16. So what we're seeing here is that although there is something that is shared amongst the continents, again latitude seems to be a significant factor. It can't be the only one. Now again, we're only describing at the moment, but we're kind of planting these seeds of curiosity. 
what else might be the factors that explain this? And then you can go and do as many of the different biomes as you want. The specification that we study requires us to do four of them. So let's find the next one, temperate grasslands, apply filter. And a similar kind of process, we can go on and describe the locations of those and take it. Those are the four, or sorry, tundra, those are the four that we have to do. Uh, you can do whichever ones you like. And once you've done that and collected it all together and gathered it all together, what's the average latitude and what's the range of latitudes? How does that vary between continents? They end up with a really sophisticated description of the locations of the different biomes. And you've planted those questions of curiosity. Why is it that the biomes are distributed the way that they are? And I'm going to then show you how you can feed into that curiosity a little bit more. And we'll come back to the deserts just as one example here. And we're going to take a look at Africa. And we're going to look at the difference between Northern Africa in the Sahara Desert and Southern Africa in the Namib Desert. So a question you could ask them. Uh, if you now take the line of latitude here of about 23 degrees, how would you describe the distribution of the desert biome across that line of 23, 24 degrees? And of course, it goes all the way from the west to the east. Let's come down here to southern Africa. Let's go about 30 degrees. How would you describe the distribution there of desert? Well, of course, the Namib desert is concentrated more on the western side. So they, they kind of share a, a 30 degrees-ish common location. But there's something very different here. And what is the reason why the desert here comes all the way to the Red Sea when the desert here doesn't come all the way to the Indian Ocean? And this is where you can give them another clue. Prevailing winds. And whenever you're looking at the prevailing winds at this location, you realize that the prevailing winds here are onshore winds, and they're not here. Which means that if you're beside an ocean, and it's an onshore wind, well, depending on the extent of prior knowledge they have, there's an interesting conversation there. My students cover onshore winds at GCSE, so they should know that the onshore wind's gonna affect the precipitation levels. Well, why don't we turn on the precipitation levels and find out the way in which it affects it. Ah, so what we can clearly see here, if I turn on the legend, it'll help us, that it is much, much drier here on the west and a lot less dry here on the east. Now it gives you a good opportunity for you to also talk about millimeters. I find that the students don't have any frame of reference when it comes to millimeters in the way they would with temperature and degrees C. You know, if it's 20 degrees C on the weather forecast or on your app or whatever, and you go outside, you experience 20 degrees C. They have that tangible sense of what it is. You don't go out on a rainy day, put your hand out, go, hmm, well, that's about a 20 millimeter day, I reckon. Nobody thinks that way. So they need guidance in, in helping with that. So all of this is orange. It might make it sound, seem like there's not very much rain there. Um, but the rain level, rainfall totals there um, on this side of Southern Africa are around about, just let that pick up, uh, about 500 uh, millimeters of rain, 750 millimeters of rain, down here along the coastal strip about a thousand to fifteen hundred millimeters of rain. Now if we come up to Britain, is that higher or lower than the rainfall totals we'll get in Britain? Just to give them a bit of an example, and we come up here and realize, ah, well, would you say that there's a lot of rain in Britain? Um, well, yeah. <laughs> Um, so you can see here that 1,000 to 1,500 millimetres of rain, especially Northern Ireland, where we're from, uh, it's pretty much what we get. So it's, it's reasonably wet, whereas over on the other side, we're down here to around about 100 or less than 100 millimetres of rain. So that longitudinal pattern due to the wind direction related to the climate helps to explain the location of the biome.
That's why the desert is in the west and not in the east. But you can see how we can use this map to do this generatively. Let's come up here to the north. Remember, this is the annual precipitation. And the annual precipitation here, right the way across all the different lines of longitude, is low. What's our, our scale here? Between 0 and 100 millimeters. So it's no surprise then that when we turn on the biomes, that they tend to match up with those bands of the least rainfall here. Now, this map also contains map of the July temperature and the January temperature. And uh, we can take a look at those as well and look at how the temperature is going to affect the biomes and things like that. Um, and that, for me, links forward into a topic that I'll be doing later on atmosphere, where we'll be looking at general circulation of the air. We'll be looking at wind direction. Um, so what I'll be able to do is link at that stage back to the concept of the trade winds. Okay, so between 30 degrees north and south, we've got the trade winds. It'll link also into the Hadley cell, uh, and 30 degrees being the sinking point of the Hadley cell, the high pressure, and that's why it's so dry. That's why you typically have, that's that common latitude of 30 degrees, um, but it's also not the only factor because where you've got these onshore winds occurring that can bring moisture on and that can change the temperature pattern or sorry the rainfall pattern which will influence the distribution of the biomes and if you really want to reinforce that with them we can come in back here with this filter i can edit this filter and i can choose this time uh, the, where's it again um, oh sorry that's the wrong one turn this one on and the filter I want to choose is I'll add to this filter we'll go moist forests green forests turn that one on and you'll see that there is this band of tropical rainforest here at 30 degrees south where you should have global high pressure according to the general circulation of the atmosphere but it's a very very narrow linear band a literal band along the coast why well it got to onshore winds the air picks up moisture over the sea meets the coastline experiences orographic uplift and you have more uh, higher levels of precipitation along the coast as we noticed there was that a um, uh, thousand to fifteen hundred millimeters of rain and that's enough to support um, that tropical moist forest tropical rainforest that exists there okay so that shows you then how i go through using this map as i say all of that can be done as a teach from the front tool if you don't have a, a bring your own device policy or don't have access to computer suite but you can see how you can use something like this to really hone their skills, to build them up layer by layer, to look at how you would describe things, um, relating them to latitude, looking at general shared latitude, looking at how you can then see what the range is, what's the difference between different continents. Um, you can look at why latitude would be one of the main factors, but then you can also start to take a look at all those lovely little anomalies. And again, because you're in charge of the scale, you can zoom right in there and get something very, very fine grained. Uh, and you can explore in tremendous detail um, what these things look like. So the biomes are these large-scale global ecosystems, yes, and the zooming out allows you to get that context, but whenever you zoom in a little bit more, you can see a lot more of the detail, a lot more of why it is you're getting that lovely bit of green because of the coastal area there and the rainfall that's coming in, and it allows you really just to go from that biggest scale and zoom in and see on a much, much smaller scale. So that is how I use GIS to teach biomes.